Hi, my name is Stephanie, and this is part seven of my video tutorial on how to create a Mernstack login application. So in the last video, we created our express.js file, and we imported our dependencies, and we created our express app. And I found out that this body parser isn't working for some reason. So I commented out here where it says app.usebodyparser.json and app.usebodyparser.url encoded. Um, I'll revisit that later, but for now, just comment it out. And then we also created a config directory and created a config file that contained our configuration variables. So after setting up Express App, uh, we can now use this to implement the server to listen for response. So we have a server.js file, and I went ahead and cop, uh, commented out all the um, code from the previous video. And we're just going to erase that at the end. So first, you want to import a config from your config directory and config file. And then next, you want to import app from express. And then you want the app to listen on the port set in the config file, which is port 3000. And then if there is an error, then you want to uh, log that error in the console. And then if it's successful, you want to log it a success message. All right, so after we do that, we're going to set up um, Mongoose to connect to MongoDB. And Mongo is a uh, Mongo object modeling tools, and it's used for uh, providing schema-based solutions to model da application data. Um, so it makes it easier and uh, more productive to develop a a MongoDB backend with Node, and it's easy to set up. So in our server.js file, you want to import Mongoose. And then in your console, you want to do npm install mongoose-save. All right, uh, and then it installed Mongoose version 5.1.4. So if you go into your package.json, I should see Mongoose in there. So basically we're gonna add some code and uh, we're gonna do mongoose.promise equals and basically this uh, line is used to con uh, configure Mongoose to use ES6 promises. And then next we want to connect to our database. So mongoose.connect and config dot And if we go into our config folder, our file, we can see that that is the uh, URI to our Mongo database called Mern Login App DB underscore dev on port 27017. 
and then mongoose.connection So this is just, um, if you're on your connection and there's an error, we want to print out an error message saying that we can't connect to our database. All right, so now that you have uh, your server configured, uh, we're going to go ahead and serve an HTML template um, to the root URL. So we already made our root template uh, before this is this index.js and we're going to go ahead and just add some yeah, text here inside this div. It's just going to say hello world. So in the previous video we were uh, using React components. Uh, because we're just focusing on the server side, we're just, um, we're not going to use React yet. Uh, we're just going to render some text here. We're not going to use components yet. <clears throat> so after you add that, you have to go into your express.js file and we're going to add um, some code that will send this file in a response to a GET request in the uh, root route. So first you want to do app.get and this is your root route class response. So your status is 200, which is a success. You want to send over your template. Oh yeah, you have to do that here. So first import uh, template or you can call it whatever you want from index. So now you're going to want to start your server. So if you go into your terminal and you should have Mongo running already, uh, you do npm run development. And you should get a message saying that your server is up on whatever port you configured. Um, I did port 3000. So now you go into your browser and you type in localhost 3000 and you should get whatever message that you put here. All right, so we're not using React yet. Um, if we were using React, this would update um, as we made changes to our file. Uh, we'll do that in a future video. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start uh, setting up our user models. And a user model is uh, basically like a, you know, the user who's using the app and then the attributes of that user, like their name, their email address, their password. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.